right so translocation part is done that is the only thing that you need for translocation now we'll talk about the epigenetic modification that is the chromosomal modifications or chromatin remodeling okay so what is that what is chromatin remodeling or what is chromosomal modifications or histone modifications so when you talk about uh, chromo or nucleosome remodeling what is nucleosome in the very first place you know what is nucleosome histone october rapid that is known as a nucleosome and this nucleosome why do you need nucleosome because the dna the length of the dna you carry or have is huge and there is also storage problem because the nucleus is very tiny compared to the cell and you cannot have a huge nucleus compared to the cytosol because the nucleus to cytosol ratio controls the cell division if the nucleus to cytosol ratio modifies or alters then that will be a signal for the cell division it's not likely that you just increase the size of the nucleus without any cause no you cannot do that everything has a limit and that's maintained in a cell so what we have here we have the dna wrapped around histone like this these are octomers of histone okay histone octomer is arranged something like this it can be difficult to draw with Uh, like three D drawing here. I'll show you the image later. But four in the bottom, four on the top. Two layers. Okay. Now the DNA is wrapped around the histones. So this histone, what are histone or proteins? And histone are the important protein which need to be delivered inside the nucleus when during replication. At the end of the replication process, we need new histones. Imagine what we know from one parental DNA, we can make two new daughter DNA, right? But we know in the parent DNA there were eight subunits of this histone monomer. So now we need eight more. So how you, it's possible new histone need to be transferred? Otherwise there is no possibility. And how exactly it's kept? Four old and four new. Just like the semi-conservative model of DNA replication, the histone is also follow the semi-conservative model. So every time. A new so from this DNA one separated and make two different strands, then fifty percent of the old histone will be there and fifty percent new histones will be tagged and then the DNA will be wrapped. Now this histone proteins it has n terminal and c terminal. Basically these histones n terminal just side n ter n terminal sides are filled with lysine rich residues lysine lysine rich residues of amino acids. So those lysine rich residues are prone to chemical modifications. What kind of modification? Acetylation, deacetylation. Acetylation means addition of acetyl group. Deacetylation means deletion of the acetyl group. Right? There are methylations. There are phosphate addition, phosphorylation. These modifications are always possible. Okay. Now, depending upon the histone's modification, whether it will be modified with phosphate or modified with acetyl group, depending upon the modification, this histone plays important role in terms of opening. the condensation of the dna or make the dna more condensed okay so the very first thing that we will understand is histone modification and among histone acetylation and deacetylation and the role of histone acetylation and deacetylation see this is how the nucleosome is present where we have you can clearly see this is very tightly compact structure of a nucleosome so this green colored structures these are histone octamer and the blue one is the dna which is wrapped around the histone and let's say this is a promoter region which is facing a histone protein and embedded inside and when a promoter is accessible need to be accessed for transcription if a protein if rna polymerase cannot access promoter region of a dna it cannot transcribe so how to access this promoter how to do here is a activator protein that sticks to the dna and then it recruits histone acetylase enzyme short form of which is known as hat hat histone acetyl transferase hat so this particular enzyme what it does it attaches acetyl group to the histone in this picture it's wrongly drawn actually seems like it's tagged to the dna 
but actually it stacked to the histone. Remember that, okay? Stacked to the histone, not DNA. So acetyl group is stacked to the histone. So once we put acetyl group to the histone, known as histone acetylation, then we can see now what happened here when the acetylation is done. Length is increased. That means what? The DNA is unwinding from the histone. So DNA is unwinding here. Unwinding of DNA is done by histone acetylation. The same thing can be reversed with the help of histone deacetylase or also known as HDAC. HDAC. HDAC enzyme. What HDAC does? Cleaves the acetyl group which is added to the histone. And simply this process can be reversed. Okay. Now how exactly the DNA gets free when the acetylation is See this. This is the kind of little drawing of how histone proteins are arranged. And there are histone octamer in this circle. And apart from that, there is also an extra histone to bind the DNA to the histone octamer. So in histone octamer, we have H2A, we have H2B, we have H3, we have H4. And apart from that, the binding or linker to histone is histone 1. Okay, see this is how the histone 1 is actually, after the rotation of the DNA, the histone 1's job is to basically tie it together so that two histone wrapped DNA is placed in a close proximity. So here you can see, the, this, is an, this is all the tails, histone tail, the N-terminal tail we talked about, this N-terminal histone tail looks like a hands holding on to the histone. Uh, holding onto the DNA which is wrapped around the histone. And what will happen the moment we acetyl, we add acetyl group, there is an alteration of structure. So the N terminal side is now free upward. As a result, the wrapped DNA is now free. This is how the wrapped DNA can become free. Acetylation causes the area of the nucleosome to be accessed or accessible by proteins like polymerase for DNA replication, for transcription, for all this process we need to do that. Okay. In eukaryotes. Now, what are the type of nucleosome modeling? Nucleosome remodeling states the modification of existing nucleosome structure. Anyway, if we can modify the existing nucleosome structure, we call it nucleosome remodeling. And it is ATP dependent process. Let's see here. This is one example of nucleosome remodeling. Where we have nucleosome maturation. So this is one example. This is another. So there are three examples here. This is example number one. Where the spacing between the histones are regular. Means two histones have a same distance between them. This is a natural condition. So Sometimes we need to do that. And generally for the compactness and forming the histones, I mean formation of a compact nucleosome structure, we also need to do that. Now, if we recruit specific proteins known as SWISNF complex, remember that, SWIS, SWISNF, SWISNF complex or known as swine. So the swine complex or SWISNF complex, utilizing ATP as an energy source, what they can do is that, they can either cause histone dimer rejection. So, new dimers can be added as I mentioned earlier. What it can do? Ejection of nucleosome. One part of the whole octamer can be released and a stretch of DNA, long stretch of naked DNA can be accessible now. Or it can do nucleosome sliding. That means the gap between the two nucleosome can be increased. Because let's say there is a promoter here. So, now they can access the promoter. Once the job is done, they will again reslide it back. These modifications can be done by the SWI SNF complex, but they are energy dependent. Then also nucleosome editing is another job that is done by ENO80. ENO80 is again another complex. This is not single protein. That's why the name is like this. Multiple proteins are involved. You don't need to know the name of the individual protein. All you need to know. SWI SNF is an important one, but ENO80's job is basically again energy utilization and what they can do is that editing. And basically editing means modifying one histone. Let's say the histone is not working properly. 
or maybe the protein is not folded properly. So once it's tagged with acetylation or phosphate, phosphate group, it's not doing its job. So that histone can be kicked out and new histone can be added. New histone protein can be added. That is histone exchange process. That can also be done by uh, this eno AT complex known as nucleosome editing. The similar, the same thing with a different image because the examples and names are clearly stated here. Remember I told you there are two HAT and HDAC, the role of which we clearly understood. HAT histone acetyl transferase attaches acetyl group to the histone. HDAC histone deacetyl splits the acetyl group from the histone. Then there are DNMT, DNA methyl transferase enzyme, the role of which we will study in the next slide. And SWI SNF complex, full form switch sucrose non-fermentable nuclear remodeling complex. Don't need to remember the full form, nobody claims it with full form, only people know it with swine complex, swine SNF complex. Okay. And here you can clearly see the process. You see that the HDAC histone deacetylates. Okay. So what it does, it cleaves out the acetyl. As a result of which, what it will do? It will do what? Compactness of the histone. Okay. On the other hand, if this area is accessible earlier, let us say this, this was the tightly compact nucleosome, swine SNF, what it does? Cleaves this histone out. So that part is now accessible by RNA polymerase to transcription is permitted. It can make protein quite easily. Now what HAT does? HAT can tag acetyl group. The red colored dot is the acetyl group. Once added, compactness. See, there was gap, but now there is compactness. Okay. And the role of DNMT, I will only skip because we are going to talk about that in the next slide. But this is how exactly the modifications are. And there are a list of uh, factors uh, involved like histone acid, like if the acetyl group is added what happens, phosphate group adds what happens and that is not always fixed. Means there are different histone, H3, H2, 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 H3, H4. Among these four, maximum modification is done to H3 and H4 because H3 and H4 in terminal site that carries maximum lysine which it is produced. Okay. That is why the modifications are mostly done there. So, what is the structure of nucleosome? I must have uh, shown it earlier, but see, the structure of nucleosome starting from DNA, the naked DNA here, okay? And then this DNA is wrapped around histone octamer. The moment DNA is wrapped around histone octamer, we also call it beads on a string model. This is important. The beads on a string model means basically there are two components. There is DNA, there is histone octamer. And the, this diameter is? 11 nanometer. DNA is only 2 nanometer. This one is 11 nanometer. Then further coiling. So this coiling is not enough. Now they further arrange themselves. See here, this is side view. If you look at the top view, how it looks like? This is how it looks like. Top view, side view. This is also side view. This is known as zigzag model basically. Zigzag model of how it is arranged. There are two models actually. This is solenoid model and zigzag model. Solenoid model is says flower shaped. So if you look at from the top, you will see a hollow chamber in the center. And zigzag model, there is no hollow chamber in the center. Maximum or in the DNA is entangled. This is the difference between zigzag model and solenoid model. If this particular model is basically done here at 30 nanometer fiber. 30 nanometer fiber is done. So, zigzag or solenoid model, how much? 30 nanometer in diameter. Now, this section of chromosome, this chromosome further, so this particular structure further folds like this and becomes 300 nanometer fiber. And then they will further condense and they will form part of chromosome which will be 1400 nanometer in diameter and one arm is 700 nanometer in diameter, total two arms, 1400 nanometer in diameter which will have a centromere in the center and at the end there are telomeres. Okay. And in this particular picture you can clearly see the DNA is visible and the DNA gets connected with the histone octamer, the blue color one histone octamer and H1 actually holds. So this is histone octamer, this is wrapped of the DNA, DNA is coming out from this side. So this is where 
the H1 is present, histone 1 is present to hold the histone, in, uh, I mean the DNA wrapping around histone in proper place, okay. And this is the same image and this image will tell you how exactly the histone octamer is arranged. You see, in the bottom we have H3, H4 and in, in top of H4 we have H2B, in top of H3 we have H2. This is how they are not likely that just the histone, like all the histones are otherwise arranged. They are arranged in the same manner. The transcription, how exactly inhibited with reproduction? Right? We saw how exactly histone acetylase causes the release of the DNA. So, how exactly the DNA can be inhibited or blocked by methylation or silenced by methylation? For that, this is, let us say, the this is CPG island, this is core promoter region and these are enhancer elements. Enhancer region is a place of eukaryotic DNA which is upstream of promoter where influencers, protein influence can bind. That can be either inducer or inhibitor. So in this case, activator protein or inducer protein binds to it and what activator protein does is along with that the methylation is done. Methylation of what? CPG multiple methylation to the CPG island is done. So, this is one approach. So, normally this, this is a location, the enhancer element which is located under CPG island. So, our activator protein need to be associated with the enhancer element in order to initiate the transcription process. But if the methyl transfer is methylate the CPG island, it will not allow the binding of activator protein to the enhancer region of the eukaryotic DNA. That will prevent it. This is one way to do that. Second approach, this is CPG island, hypermethylated, you can clearly see it is hypermethylated and this is core promoter further downstream and what happened here is that here CPG binding protein comes in. CPG binding protein, what it does is actually known as methyl CPG binding protein. This protein kinds of bind with multiple methylated structures of the CPG island DNA attaches with them. It further recruits histone deacetylase near the promoter region. And what histone acetyl deacetylase will do? Condensation of the DNA. Condensation of the DNA near the promoter of the DNA. So, condensation of promoter means promoter is inaccessible by the polymerase, no further transcription. That is how these are the two approach with which a methylation can prevent the accessibility towards promoters thus preventing the process of transcription.